Hey, you were kind of joking about it last week saying that, yeah, I got it interviewed on. And I think you referenced a few sources of like five tips for better brain health and kind of referenced the idea of like, they, they weren't that like earth shattering. It's pretty basic stuff, but let's repeat these though. Cause people, I think a lot of times, maybe with everything that's going on in the world might just think like, Oh, how do I change my perspective in this world? How do I feel better in my own skin and my own head and that type of thing? What were those five things that you talked about? Let's just say them all loud for people so they can ground for them and wire something into people's heads. Well, the, the data from our lab, it's a project that I've had a lot of passion on recently. Data from my lab and other labs too is quite conclusive that sleep is like the number one thing that it impacts mental health. If you are getting a good night's sleep and most people need between seven and nine hours, there is a small subset of people that need less than seven hours. But one of my favorite studies is they found all these people that said they could live off of five or six hours of sleep and they were all underperforming. There was like 3% of them or something that were able to actually function that way. The rest of them just thought they could. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They willed themselves to it. They hustled their way to it. Or, you know, how many cups of coffee do you need to get going? And, and yeah, right. You go. So sleep is the, the number one thing. Like getting a good night's sleep is a priority. And there's all sorts of sleep tips that are out there that you can learn to help have a better night's sleep. Um, the other two are kind of, I always say, it's the stuff our parents told us because it's, it's a diet and exercise. You know, we all know that alcohol sales have gone up during the pandemic quite massively, but it's actually the worst thing you can do in a stressful time. So we do it because we believe that if we have a couple of drinks, you know, it's going to make us feel better and we'll relax and chill. But what's the data on alcohol? And to be honest, I'm not a Puritan here. I enjoy a couple of beers as much as the next guy. <laughs> you know, alcohol is a depressant. So if you're in a depressing situation and you're taking depressants, it, it's just, you know, <laughs> it, it's a short-term fix with long-term consequences. And just diet too. There's a lot of research now that high sugar diets are bad for your mental health. The, the new Canada Food Guide is, is actually pretty impressive in the sense that they've hit, hit it pretty good, which it's not what we were raised with. It's definitely changed from the food guide I saw as a kid. I'm going to have to link that up because I, I don't think I've maybe even looked at it for 20 years. Yeah, just about, I, think it was a year, I don't remember exactly. It was in the last year or two, they released a new food guide. And it's, it's basically stuff you see in the media, which is you probably eat a le less red meat and less processed meat and eat more vegetables, less carbohydrates. So it's in line and the research supports it. And the last one's exercise, you know, whatever your form of exercise is for me, it's a daily walk. Exercise is good for brain health. So those three things are sort of the classics. The two newer ones that people talk about are things you can do in terms of mindfulness. So a lot of people think of meditation right away, but it doesn't have to be meditation. It could be yoga. It could be breathing. It could just be sitting in your backyard in a quiet space, but just stuff that allows your brain to sort of calm down and have a bit of time off. So mindfulness uh, and all these forms of mindfulness have been shown to have positive impacts on brain health. And then the last one, social interaction, which of course we've already touched on a bit. But, you know, if you do those five things in principle, that's like how you're training for the brain Olympics. And, and if your brain is in a healthier spot, you're better able to deal with things like the pandemic. It, again, there's so many cool studies that could be done, but I suspect strongly that people that are doing more of these things are probably reporting less rates of depression and suicide. And, and people that are ticking all the boxes, you know, there was a stretch early in the pandemic where just some personal stuff happened in my life. And I was not ticking all five of the boxes. And I can assure you my mental health was not where I wanted it to be. And as I've sort of regained these five things in my life, my mental health is in a better space. Yeah, no, and I think that's an important thing to say out loud, too, is that, you know, a lot of times I know I just started new, uh, a program, a 12-week program, actually. I invested in it. And I'm like, I'm all in. And it's health and fitness and mindset and breath work and everything related. And I'm wired myself personally to go, okay, I'm going to do this like right. And which means I'm going to get all my baseline. So I got like the list here. I'm going to go get my gut health, micronutrients tested, my blood cells, my vitamin levels, my body fat test. And before I knew it, I had like 20 things that it was just like, oh God, what am I going to have time to do this? You know? So I actually grounded back to just working on one thing at a time. So having an intention and then a behavior that then becomes a habit and kind of like the, the path to becoming a new person and the silence thing and, and mindfulness has been a big one for me because I do a cold plunge every single day. Now, all of, <laughs> I, I know you're telling us about that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I bought like a horse trough and put it on my on my deck. And luckily here in Canada, it's cold enough. But I've been going in it and actually using it as like a journaling thing too. So like I'm making commitment, I go in it every day and then I speak to my camera and just record myself and journal. And I had a friend the other day challenge me. He goes, all right, I'm going to push you on something here. He says, why don't you sit in there and do nothing? I was like, what do you mean do nothing? Like, why, why would I not do something while I'm in there? If I'm going to be sitting in a cold plunge. He's like, no, no, no. Trust me on this. Just do nothing. And I just started last night with the intention on doing that. And I found my mind just racing. Like I had 50 things grow through my head before I finally caught myself and stopped and just said, just breathe. <laughs> so I'm just saying that, like, be kind to yourself, right? As you start these practices. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, yeah, the, the big thing to realize is if you walked away from listening to this and you were going to try to tackle all five of these things in one go, you're bound to fail, right? Like it's, it, you know, our brains, as, as you mentioned, it's true. Like when we're rewiring habits one step at a time, right? You know, you've got to give your time for your brain to learn something new. So you pick one thing and, 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 you, and you do that and then you tackle something else. And also realize you can't do it all the time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed that clip and you want to watch the full unedited episode, go ahead and click over here. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. Thanks so much.